The place looked run down and deserted. Parts of the wall had fallen down. Parts of the wall had fallen down. It was an old helmet. A helmet on a pole? Always useful. Oh, I just hope this works. Are you ready? Can't wait. I'd made it without getting shot, but I sure didn't feel lucky. Somehow, I had to distract the shooter again, and this time, I was on my own. With a ghost from the past giving me an evil stare. Oh, heck! The apples were bruised. I was having a powerful sense of deja vu. I'd never got on with goats. Good goat. No, 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 no! Hey, that's mine. The goat had eaten Hobbs carefully crafted provenance. The crumbling fountain wouldn't provide me with any cover. The side view mirror lay too far into goat territory. That wouldn't make any sense. Hey, Mr. Goat. Uh -huh. Look what I got for you. I was hoping the goat would be more friendly now. Now then, old fella. You don't mind if I move your tire, do ya? No, 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 no! That was never gonna happen. Look what I got for you, little fella. Never in a month of Sundays. I couldn't let the goat eat Trevor. I was having a powerful sense of deja vu. Now then, old fella, 
You don't mind if I move your tire, do ya? No. No, 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 no. That wouldn't have worked. That so didn't work. The idea was so devious, I was ashamed I'd even thought of it. The idea was... It didn't work. Call me a hoarder, but I wasn't giving that to the goat. I needed a better idea. The shots were coming from inside the house. The old tree offered cover from the shooter. That wasn't worth trying. Hey, Mr. Goat. Uh, look what I got for you. Hey, Mr. Goat. Uh, look what I got for you. Hey, Mr. Goat. Uh, look what I got for you. That was never going to work. Hey, what? Whoa! Luckily, the goat was tied to an old tire. Unluckily, it was blocking my way. The view was beautiful. I wish I had time to enjoy it. A pile of old brandy bottles had been discarded behind the car. A pile of apples had just been laid on a sheet, just out of the goat's reach. That wouldn't make any sense. Oh boy, you're gonna love this. I distracted the goat, but it wouldn't take him long to eat that apple. The goat now had a whole pile of apples to tuck into. I tossed him my last apple. That would be pointless. I wasn't going to frighten the shooter with his own reflection.
Even while he was eating, the goat had his eye on me. I'd moved the tire further away from the car. The old car was riddled with bullet holes. I blinded the shooter, time to make a dash for it. Don't think I can't see you, senor. If you so much as move an inch, I shall shoot you. The blunderbuss was ancient, but clearly still worked fine. Senor, please! Whoever you are, hold your fire! I'm not armed! Good. That makes it easier for me to shoot you. My name is George Stobart. I'm a friend! I have no friends. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Please, put the gun down. No. Leave now, or I shoot. All we want is a quick look inside the castell. I don't believe you. You are here to kill Senor Marquez. Senor Marquez? He's alive? Well, he'll vouch for us. You don't fool me like that. Get out of here before I kill you. Senor Marquez knows me, I swear. And I know a lie when I hear one. Go now, or I shoot. Wait! I have important information. Buste, vingue a mi. Do you understand what I am saying? Try saying it and let's see. Ah, well, uh, I'm George Stobart, and I come in peace. Please, put the gun down. I'm not armed. And I'm still not hearing an explanation. I can understand the old man being edgy, but you look like a woman who's seen the world. Nice work. You managed to insult Ramon and me in one sentence. Do you mind putting that down? I've had a really bad day. Guns don't agree with you? No, and neither do goats. I've got bruises in places that, well, you know, places. So leave. We're here looking for something. Well, go look for it somewhere else. We were helping a man called Marquez in Paris. He is my father. I could see where she inherited her temperament. Your father? Well, he's our friend. Why should I believe you? Show me proof. I have your father's medallion. So you're a thief too, huh? Look at this photo. It's old. Do I care? How about this? That's not proof. Try again. We track down his painting. La Maledictio. Look. Where did you get this? In London. Hmm. All right. You better come with me, but no funny business, okay? You know, you sound just like my friend Nico. Nico! What's going on, Ramon? Who's out there? Some crazy American. Don't worry. Eva will deal with him. Papa! These people want to talk to you. Eva, I thought we agreed to shoot intruders on sight. You, how did you find me? It wasn't easy, senor. We thought you were dead. You were wrong. They've brought you something, Papa. Can it be? At last, la malediction.
Well, Signor Marquez, looks like La Maledicio hangs in its right place again. Indeed. I have waited all my life for this. But something interesting? The painting. It is different. The face in the middle. The one with the symbol of the tabula veritatis on it? How do you know about the tabula? A priest told me. Said it was the devil's work. Ta! Priests. Full of lies, every one of them. Oh, really? Well, this priest said that the tabula was an instrument to raise the devil. Fool! Who would want to raise the devil? But you do want to find the tabula. Yes, because it is a Gnostic treasure. It is special, and my duty is to keep it safe. I was sure that Marquez still wasn't telling me the whole truth. And now? I shall decipher the painting and find the tabula. Before she died, my mother said that once the painting hung here again, its meaning would become clear, and the route to the tabula would be revealed. So, what's the answer? Where's the tabula? I don't know. The room has changed. Was there something different about the room back then? No. Yes. I don't know. You must help me. Well, how? I, I'm not a Gnostic. Senor, you must, because soon the Russian will be here. He knows about Castel del Sanz? I regret, Senor, that in Paris I told his sidekick a little too much. Ah, well, I guess we'd better figure this out. And fast. I'll go and keep watch. Shoot on sight, remember. Well, Nico, what now? You try and work out just why the painting has to be in this room. I'll go and see if Eva knows anything. Whether he knew it or not, I was sure Marquez had the answers. The photo was of the Marquez family. Finally, La Maledicio was back in its rightful place. Part of the family photograph was missing. The very section that was so clear in Nico's photo. La Maledicio, back in its rightful place. But what were the clues? The plinths looked like they could be rotated. The painting held all the answers. The Tower of Saints had led us to the Castel. I wondered where the other clues would take us. There was a tower within the ring. Maybe it indicated a place? A scarred face stared back at me from within the Ouroboros. Hobbes must have uncovered the image when he was restoring the painting. But what did it mean? And what was its link to the Tabula Veritatis? Inside the ring was what looked like an affluent town. Within the ring, there were a number of houses. It was a village or a small town. Inside the ring was a castle gate. I had no idea what it signified. The bearded figure was similar to the one on the fireplace in the hall. I wondered if there was a connection. The orb in the old man's hand glowed with a green light. The figure of the young man was just like the one on the front of the fireplace. It couldn't be a coincidence. The youthful figure held a glowing blue orb in his hand. The carved figure was like the bearded man in the painting. 
It also reminded me of the figures from the illustration in Simeon's notes. I wondered if the notes could help decrypt La Maledicio. The illustration showed a group of colored figures engaged in some sort of ritual. The blue and green figures appeared to be in control. The crowd in the foreground were colored red. I guessed it was a representation of the ritual in the text. The large figures looked just like the carvings on the Castell fireplace. Senor Marquez? Mr. Stobart? If we're going to find the tabula... Yes? Then you will have to help. Of course. I mean, by being totally honest with us. <laughs> when have I not been honest? So, Eva is your daughter? She was a gift from God, late in my life. One day she will find room for Gnosticism in her heart, I am sure of it. What happened back in Paris? We thought you were dead. A man came to the apartment looking for Miss Collard. He mentioned a stolen painting owned by a Russian. Obviously, I informed him that I was the true owner. Obviously. Next thing I knew, this thug had me pinned to a chair and was threatening to shoot me. So I told him of the castell, and while he telephoned his boss, I hit him with the little china dog. Guess he didn't know you were the pugnacious type. Tell me about the painting. When I was a child, I would stand here for hours, just staring at it. Who was the mysterious painter, El Serp, the serpent? And what did it mean, La Maledicio, the curse? I asked my father, but he just told me to be patient. He said that one day I would know everything. Senor. Can you decipher any of the painting? The Tower of Saints, of course. I knew it was a castell. And the saints themselves are Gnostic. You see the woman in red? The one you marked in the photo? She is Mary Magdalene. We revere her as Christ's greatest disciple. The rest, I don't know. The symbol on the face, it is obviously the tabula. But the elements around it, I don't know. When were you last here, Signor? Not since that day, when my father was killed. So why did the painting bring us here? As I said, because only here in this room will its clues become clear. Why is the Tabula Veritatis so important to the Gnostics? It is an object of immense power. My ancestors kept it safe for hundreds of years. They brought it to Catalonia as exiles long ago. In any generation, only one Gnostic knows its exact location. My father, Xavier, was the last of these. He knew dark forces were gathering, but I was too young to learn the secret, so he commissioned La Maledicio, embedding clues to the location of the tabula within the painting. But what is the tabula? What does it do? I do not know. I know only that in the wrong hands it would be catastrophic for mankind. Why would a Dominican priest, Father Simeon, describe the Gnostics as evil? That order was founded specifically to fight heresy and to eradicate Gnosticism. 
Behind their backs, the Dominicans were nicknamed the Dominicanes, or Hounds of God. For years, these dogs hunted down and butchered my people. They called us heretics, but in truth, they sought to find and seize the tabula. Is this one of Nico's photographs of the robbery? Yes, she gave it to me. And did you write these notes on it? Yes, I was trying to solve part of the painting. Solve? I never knew what lay in that portion of La Maledicio. The photograph you have of my family, this part of the painting was missing. But once I saw the Tower of Saints, I knew I had to come here. Just as you did, senor. I think this is yours. My medallion? Where did you find it? It was left in Nico's neighbor's apartment. Do you want it back? No, you keep it for now. It has a meaning, a purpose. Perhaps you can find out what. Sure. Just let me know if you ever want it back. So this is you with your mother and father? Indeed. Taken in this very building many years ago. Take a look at this sketch. It is the face in La Maledicio. It was drawn by the man who restored the painting. Then he knew of the Tabula Veritatis. What other secrets did he uncover? I don't know, but he's dead now. Just as well. The fewer that know the secrets of La Maledicio, the better. Father Simeon, the Dominican priest, was carrying these papers when he was killed. So? You're not interested in them? I have no interest in priests or their papers, senor. You shall get back to it. I had to get closer before trying that. Marquez said that the painting contained clues only a Gnostic could solve. But when it was back in this room, all would become clear. That wouldn't work. That would be pointless. It was a shield on which heraldic symbols had been painted. The scroll beneath the shield read Puchada. Senor, can we talk? Well, I can. Can you? What I meant was... I'm busy. Ramon sure was a little light in the charm department. It was a circular stained glass window. Why didn't Marquez want his medallion back? That wouldn't make any sense. The stone fireplace was old and dusty. It looked like it had lain undisturbed for decades. The carved trees bore a remarkable resemblance to the ones in Simeon's notes. 
The bookcase held an assortment of ancient books. There was a crate of brandy amongst all the mess. The bookcase held an assortment of ancient books. There was a piece of stone on the wall. It looked like a discarded statue. It looked like this part of the castell had taken some damage. The end of the passage was blocked off with rubble. There were spent bullet casings lying amongst the rubble. What exactly happened here? The door was locked. It was the lower half of a green, barefooted statue. It resembled the statues in Marquez's family photo. It was a collection of what could only be described as stuff. I had to get closer before trying that. La Maledizio, back in its rightful place. But what were the clues? That was never gonna work. I only had a few matches. Using one now probably wasn't a good idea. There was no fuel to light in the fireplace. Just dust and a few spiders. That wouldn't work.
So, until you came here, you knew nothing about the castle? Didn't know, wasn't interested. I better get back on guard in case anyone else shows up. Your father needs our help, Piva. My father needs rest, peace and quiet. Not more of this Gnostic nonsense. So, what did you find out? Not a lot. Eva thinks her father's losing it. She doesn't have much time for Gnosticism. She's never been here before. In fact, Marquez never even talked about the place. As far as I can tell, she and her father never got on. She left home the moment she could. Hmm. I don't blame her. So, why is she here now? Marquez begged her. Said he was in danger. I guess maybe I'll go inside and have a look around too. Tell me if you find anything. I'm not having much luck so far. I'd put some statues above the fireplace, but it was hard to tell if they were the same ones as in Marquez's family photograph. It was the lower half of a green, barefooted statue. The green stone figure was barefoot and wearing a hat. Like the other one, this looked a lot like the statues in Marquez's family photograph. The blue-colored statue was robed with a bald head and bare feet. The blue statue was missing its head. Only his robes and sandaled feet remained. On the fireplace behind them were two identical statues. The blue-colored statue was robed with a bald head and bare feet. The blue statue was missing its head. Only his robes and sandaled feet remained. It was the lower half of a green, barefooted statue. The statues were facing outward, just like in the Marquez photo. I waited with bated breath for something to happen. 
nothing. The medallion Marquez's father wore looked identical to the one I found in Paris. It was strange that Marquez didn't want it back. Why didn't Marquez want his medallion back? I've still got Marquez's medallion. I think it might come in useful. I'm surprised he let you keep that. He must trust you. Why didn't Marquez want his medallion back? That wouldn't have worked. Uh, excuse me? <coughs> I'll leave you to it then. The statues on the plinth were the same as the ones in the Marquez family photograph, and their colors matched the characters in Simeon's manuscript. I was definitely onto something. That wouldn't make any sense. The painting held all the answers. It was the figure of a priest, but with a dog's head. The figure was pointing up at a ring above him. Inside the ring was what looked like an affluent town. The priest appeared to have a padlock through his mouth. He was pointing down to the ring below him. There was a tower within the ring. It was a tower of tormented souls. They looked like the damned. It was a castle of saints, Castel de Saints, in Catalonia. The carved figure resembled the young man in the painting. It also matched the pose of the figures in Simeon's picture. The church clearly had a long history of demonizing the Gnostics. The first passage read, And thus spoke the accused. In this ritual we find succor. Clad in blue, the perfecti take the form of the spiritual and look towards the rising sun, toward the tree of knowledge. Clad in green, the credentes look the other way, towards the setting sun, where stands the tree of life. I wondered what it all meant. That wasn't worth trying. I held up the medallion to the fireplace. Georges, what are you... Hold on. I'm waiting to see if... Nothing happened. 
Huh. It was one of those ideas that worked better in theory. I needed a better idea. That was almost a great idea. Almost. The statues on the plinth were the and their colors match. I was Ah, what is this? Staircase. I never knew. We must go up. We don't have much time. Stairs. Always stairs. Oh my god, look at this. Jules? Jules! Huh. What's this? A piece of burnt paper with the word Wolfram. That sounds familiar. Wolfram. I curse that name forever. What do you know about Wolfram, senor? Wolfram. I spit on the name. So you have lived here for a long time? All my life. My father served here before me. In fact, he named me after Senor Xavier's favorite saint, Saint Ramon, patron saint of the falsely accused. That's nice. Not really. The Moors put a padlock through his mouth. Oh, I see. Well, I guess there's a lesson there for all of us. What is Wolfram? It was a mining company run by a murdering swine called Ganon. In the Civil War, they backed the fascists. In return, Ganon was given soldiers to do his dirty work. They came here, brought their bloody war to this house, and killed Senor Xavier. They shot Xavier? Senor Marquez's father? I was just a boy, but I remember like it was yesterday. Shot him and his friend, Hernandez, like animals. Why did they come here? They were searching for something, but they brought death with them. But there is one thing I have never understood. Javier tried to escape through the library, but the library windows are barred. It is a dead end. This Kenan, who was he? He was Swiss, a businessman and a murdering swine. So what did he want here? I don't know. When he wasn't torturing the locals, he disappeared to the library. Spent weeks in there making notes and studying maps. His men, they crossed the whole of Catalonia searching for something. Did they find it? Who knows? One day, Ganon just disappeared. He never came back. An accident, perhaps, in the mountains. May his soul rot in hell. The soldiers didn't stay long to search for him. 
They hated him too. The name Genan was familiar. He was the person who had tried to buy La Maladexio. A coincidence? Perhaps. There is no such thing as coincidence. So, when the soldiers left, you took back the house? Yes. A few years later, I returned and cleaned the place up. It broke my heart. I locked the library. I could not bear to touch Gaiman's papers. Can I have a look at the library? No. I have kept it locked to honor the memory of Senor Xavier. Please, this is important. I lost the key. You lost it? That evening when I locked it up, I drank to the memory of Senor Xavier. The cellars were well stocked, Senora. It was a long night. I hid the key, then forgot where I hid it, so it is lost. That was all that was left in the morning. I haven't touched a drop since. I needed to find out what Ganon had been working on in that library. The bookcase held old Catalan books. I wouldn't be able to read them. The plants, at least, were thriving in the rubble. The door was locked. I had to find the key. I wondered where Ramon could have hidden it. The internal courtyard had been beautiful once. Even overgrown like this, it had a serenity. There was a crate of brandy amongst the mess in the Great Hall. Apparently Ramon drank them all. Must have been some night. The hall had collections of old items everywhere. Ramon claimed he had tidied the place up. Eva, I am glad your father is safe. He's old and foolish. He shouldn't be here, but he wouldn't listen to me. I suppose he's still going on about that painting. Well, yes. In fact, we decoded it. You did? Yes. We found a secret passage behind the fireplace. What? Your father and Georges went in. What? That's ridiculous. He's an old man. Don't worry, Georges knows what he's doing. So he always tells me anyway. Have you ever been inside the library? No, I'm told it is locked. The key is lost. Ramon says he hid it years ago and cannot remember where. Shame. Can you think of anywhere Ramon might have hidden the key? What do you think I am, psychic? 
Your father is looking very frail. He's old, and he could do without people giving him the runaround chasing lost treasure. Seen anything suspicious? Apart from you and your American boyfriend, no. He's not my boyfriend, you know. Whatever. I didn't think she'd be interested. I didn't think she'd be interested. Talk to you later. <sighs> the garden was now an overgrown wilderness. The fountain had dried up long ago. I had been using it to clean up Adam's apartment. In the rush to escape, I must have left it in my pocket. Georges had a golf club once made by the same company. That wouldn't make sense. I needed to try something else. It was a nice idea, but wouldn't have worked. No, I needed a better idea. That wouldn't have worked. No, I needed a better idea. An intricate mosaic adorned the floor. The gum was well chewed, and still is sticky. No, that would never have worked. The castell was vast, but most of it was now inaccessible. Georges, are you there? The grate had locked back into place. Hello, little one. An old pair of shoes. Someone had been sleeping in the car, but long, long ago. 
The floor of the car was littered with keys from sardine cans. A 5D71. Extraordinary. The dashboard seemed intact, but this old family car would never drive again. Another brandy bottle? Ramon really went for it that evening. I picked up what looked like an old diary. It was Ramon's. The library will forever be a shrine. No one will enter. I shall hide the key in a safe place, once I've eaten. I have just what I need and know what to do. Oh, beautiful lady, your eyes are so blue. I just can't stop thinking of you. Hmm, Ramon was quite the budding poet. Our lives are entwined like ivy on a tree. That is what you mean to me. Nice. Hey, I was reading that. An old and very dubious pillow. The inside of the car was in a bad state. Have you no respect for great art? Pretty indigestible, huh? A pile of old apples. Looked like the goat had been eating lots of them. A heap of old brandy bottles. Ramon must have been in the car on that night all those years ago. The goat had been tethered. Seemed unnecessary. The gentle animal wouldn't have harmed a soul. An old apple tree provided shade. Shame that the goat's rope wasn't long enough for him to enjoy it. The mountains of Catalonia, breathtaking. Yes? Are you sure you can't think of where Ramon might have hidden the key? No, and neither do I care. Talk to you later. <sighs> the wind chime looked like it was made from old cans. I wondered if it was Ramon's handiwork. Despite the scrap components, the wind chime was beautiful. It was uncanny. Despite the scrap components, the wind chime was beautiful. It was uncanny. One old sardine can was bulging slightly. I fished around. There was something in it. And there it was. The key to the library. Ramon had been true to his word. This place was like a shrine. <laughs> 